Okay, it's mighty fine weather. Hopefully there's no thunderstorms this week so I can proceed with car stuff. Starting with the daily, the Mirage SDZ-R. Um, yeah, I'm just draining the coolant now. And then I'll proceed to take everything off for the uh, cam belt job. Which seems to be a lot easier than the twin turbo GTO. I don't think I'm going to have to remove the radiator. Um, just all of this stuff here. So, let's get started. Let's do that. Man, it's so awesome when you have all the right tools like power tools, extensions, and all this professional stuff. But like this thing here, this thing's a grabber. You press this button, uh, you press the end, and then not only is the end of the tip of this end uh, magnetic, but a claw comes out when you press it. So, when let's see if I can get this to focus, so there are bolts that are removed. All I have to do is uh, claw them in, and voila grabbed it and then I just drop it cool stuff almost there okay everything's been going smoothly except the pulley doesn't want to come off so good thing I have one of these claws this is what you do okay uh oh it doesn't want to come off Hmm, wait. Okay, take two. Hopefully this comes off. Yeah, you see? Oh shit, can you hold that? Just, just look at that. Please come up. Oh, what's up boys? That's so good, having Yay. the right tools. Thanks to my camera lady. Uh, that, that is looking promising people. There's no leaks. There are no leaks whatsoever. Okay, let's remove all of this now. This is actually a big job. Whew, it's 1.30 almost, but we started maybe three hours ago. And I've removed everything <laughs> to get to the camp belts, finally. Yay! Come on, focus, please. Uh, as you can see, the camp belts on this car was done like almost 20 years ago in 2004, October at 125,000 Ks. But, uh, and the car is currently sitting at 222,000 Ks, so it's due in 3,000 Ks. But you can see, look, look, look at this. This is an almost 20 year old cam belt, and it, there's no cracking. There's the Made in Japan logo uh, uh, printing, print still there. Uh, overall, we're looking actually really good. Let me just put this on bright. It's like an Evo. It's exactly like an Evo, just without the balancer shaft. Um, but yeah, you can see timing is perfect. That's that's one mark there. The other mark is there. And the crankshaft <laughs> is right there. You can see that. Oh, let me just straighten it up. There. That dot on the there on the sprocket there the indent is marked up with the dot there so yeah fuck this car's timing is perfect uh not really much engine leaks uh doesn't look like it just really dirty there's the where is the water pump on this thing uh oh here that's the water pump so we've got to remove that replace it replace it all and there's the tensioner I'm gonna actually have a look if all the parts are the same. Otherwise, I'd be pretty pissed off if it isn't. These pulleys, though, uh, yeah, this is old. This is, see, this is the problem. Um, they start to rust and the surface gets rough. And then when you're spinning it like thousands of RPM, then the belt starts to wear out. Um, you know, that's like sandpaper, but pretty, pretty amazing how, yeah, how resilient and tough these belts are. No signs of cracking, it's still pretty supple. Uh, actually, a bit hard, but yeah, you can hear it squeak. Ooh, that's dangerous, man, that's dangerous. <laughs> Probably could snap at any time, maybe, who knows? I don't know, I'm not a mechanic, I'm just a backyard tinkerer, so. Let's get onto this, hopefully it doesn't fucking rain. I think I should be able to get this car done uh, by the end of today. Maybe I'll get some food. Pearl's just gonna go for a stroll to get me some lunch so I can keep <laughs> being productive and keep working on this thing. 
I'm actually happy that the weather is not gonna be storming and tornadoing, cycloning. Uh, Pearl's enjoying. She just was like, oh, Sarap means uh, yummy in Tagalog, which means it's just nice weather. Uh, the weather feels good. Okay, let's do this. Camp out time. Okay, so it's looking pretty disgusting in here, as you can see. Uh, there are no oil leaks, but it's just really grimy. So, we got some good old brake clean, brake parts cleaner. And uh, I know these aren't brakes, but this is universal, so we'll just spray this everywhere. And, uh, and just clean, clean everything out, because uh, it's much nicer, it's a way nicer uh, experience. Oh, look at that, look how quickly this stuff cleans this shit. It's a way nicer experience uh, working on cars when it's not dirty. And I'm um, just making my life harder. It's gonna drip on the driveway, so I'm gonna have to clean the driveway later with some, uh, with my with the water blaster. Look at that! All that yuck stuff up there. Oh, so satisfying. So I'll just let this pre soak and soak and uh, let it clean. It's supposed to be white, as you can see. Okay, this is where the satisfying thing is for a car guy like me new parts so we have the cam belt as you can see this is what it looks like brand new uh it should be the same one but what i'm curious about is uh i just want to make sure that i did get given the right auto tensioner this is the part that puts tension on the belt uh because when, an, when the engine's rotating you want that tension to keep the line the alignment correct without this this is gonna come loose and then it'll probably come off and then your engine's fucked and this is the water pump this is also spun by the belt as you can see that creates a vortex and then your water gets your coolant gets circulated around the engine so it doesn't overheat when your engine overheats it's usually this failing uh, because people don't change it in time so let's have a look if this actually fits okay that uh the tensioner looks to be about the same yeah yep exactly the same uh very nice uh no worries there Whew. okay i thought the water pump was not the same part but it actually is uh it's hard to get my hand in there to compare but but it's the same size it's got that big one here that bolt hole there doesn't get used it's probably for the the cover and then you got a little one up there and a big one underneath so this is it big unused little big and it's the same shape from here <sighs> almost uh that, that made my heart sink because imagine <laughs> spending hours to get to this level and then the water pump's not the same and you have to wait for parts to get here and you have to move the car and you have to put it back together not ideal okay it's time to give these cam lockers a go what these will do is lock the cam shafts in place gears sorry in place so when i'm putting the new belt in it's not going to move because you want that timing to be perfect um i bought two because those two cars are even more complicated than this one so this car has two camshafts or cam gears. So one, one, two. Whereas those two and the one under the cover has four. That's why I need two of each to lock two sets of these in place. But for now, we only need one because there's only two here. So hopefully this works because I got this last second from a trade me dealer. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, that worked, lads. And ladies, ladies, uh, so now this is gonna stop the cams from rotating when I remove the tensioners, putting tension on the belt. Um, because one of these is spring loaded from the valve stems, uh, from the valves uh, in the engine, so it's gonna naturally wanna spin it. So that's bad if that happens, so this should stop that from happening, and we can now proceed to safely removing the belt, the tensioners, the pulleys and uh water pump let's get on with this lucky i found a nail that's the same thickness as the grenade pin on the the tensioner because i need to hold the tensioner that's currently in the car stop it from flying out so this should work okay here goes oh beautiful mate look at that it fit right in <laughs> that should stop the yeah, the tensioner from flying out. That was a good lunch. I had some Subway. Thank you, Pearl. And now we got some sushi. 
and bubble tea. Hopefully this rain stops so we can get back to it. Oh, it's different. Pearl Susanna Tan. I'll send it to your mum. <laughs> okay, folks, day two. And um, apparently from 1 p.m. it's gonna be thunderstorming. So I decided, fuck it, let's continue on with my leave and so I can keep working on the cars. So I'm about to go into Bunnings Warehouse to get a... And here we are. This is what we need. A white marker pen. Okay, I'll show you what this is for later. Okay, got the pen, $7.50. Super cheap here, let's have a look for some tools. Okay, we need one of these, but this is 14 bucks here at Super Cheap. I think Repco's got something similar but cheaper, so let's go to Repco. Okay, let's have a look. Here we go. All right, this was the last one. And look, only $5. The color sucks, but, you know, black and red would have been better to go with the rest of my tools, but this is cheap. Okay, let's get on with the day. Okay, I'm done with the procrastinating. The weather is looking good. A little bit hot, but that's better than rain. Got my umbrella to protect me from the sun. So, we have five hours. It's 10 a.m. before apparently thunderstorms are coming. Now, this is what I got this marker for. Um, this is to make the timing a lot easier later. So, here's one timing mark. That has to align with this um, notch in the cam. As you can see, someone's already done this from the previous job. But what I wanna do is also mark the belt so then I can mark the other belt um, to make it easier to install later. So let me just mark these. There you go. So that section of the belt is marked and that too. And for the bottom, I'll just mark this part here and mark this part of the belt. All right, we can proceed to removing the belt and the tension, well, the tension first, then the belt, then the water pump. Let's do this. Okay, let's remove the tensioner so we can free this belt up. I've got the cam locks in place, so hopefully it doesn't move. Oops, that triggered <laughs> the, uh, the AC line triggered the trigger and it's not moving. Now, because that um, the nail is in place that I put yesterday, uh, it's not going to fly out everywhere. Oop. Let me just get this out. And there we go. So that's part one. Oh, shit. That's the tensioner. And I accidentally dropped this. So I better put that back on. Okay, so the cam locks have been put back in place. Awesome. Tensioner's out. Now we can proceed to remove the belt very easily because there's no more tension pushing uh, holding it in you just have to carefully move this out of the way Ooh, why is it stuck nope false alarm just the angle and up the top and then we should actually go from underneath oh, it's binding on something the alternator and there we have it the cam belt's off now let's compare it to the new one. Hopefully it's, a, it's the same size. I don't want any more delays. All right, perfection. They're exactly the same size and the belt hasn't even stretched despite how old it is. It's pretty tough uh, technology. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the, the marks on this belt so that I know which teeth to put on to get rid of all the guesswork. Okay, next up, we have to remove the idler pulley. This is easy and then the tensioner, and then the water pump. Idler pulley, I should be able to get with this straight away. Let's do this. Love it. Oh, I love how everything just comes out of this car with no issues, there's no rust, no seized parts. See, this is why Japanese cars are superior. This car is like 28 years old, or 27. Math sucks, but yeah, this is the original part from all those years ago and it's still going but I'm gonna replace it to be proactive because it's better to be proactive than to be reactive when it comes to engines um, all these parts that I'm replacing only cost me like $200 versus an expensive engine okay the bolts for the tensioners off this should just come off easily hopefully all right that came off nice and easy here's the old tensioner Let's compare it with a new one. 
Nice. 100% the same. Now this is a very important part and uh, it's very important you get a genuine Mitsubishi or Toyota or whatever brand your car is because this is a hydraulic pressurized tensioner and uh, during heat cycles when your engine goes hot cold from being used um, the belt tension can vary what this does is it ensures that this um, gives the belt the correct tension at all times uh, in all conditions. Uh, most people cheap out on this because this is an expensive part. It's like $200 for a genuine one. What happens is they buy a $50 one and it breaks and the whole engine stuffed. So always buy genuine. Okay, now the last part is to remove the water pump. This is going to be tricky because once I remove this, there's probably going to be water coolant flowing out, uh, coming out. So I'm not going to film this next part. It's going to be a bit tricky. Uh, it looks like it's exactly the same part, which is awesome. No worries there, so let's do this. Okay, the four bolts to remove the water pump was quite tricky, but we managed to get uh, get it off. So now here comes the messy part. Let's remove the water pump. Oh God, see, as you can see, uh-oh, I made a mess here. I'm gonna need to get a bucket of water and um, hose this off. Looks like there's one more bolt there to remove, which is that one there. But first, I need to do the responsible thing and clean this up. Okay, that little bolt's been removed, as you can see. God, love, I love having power tools. Here he is. I'll put that there with the rest of the bolts. Good thing they're all the same size. And hopefully this just comes off now. Yeah! There we go, folks. Water pump's out. And um, it's not looking too shabby, uh, actually. It's not too bad at all. Like, the rust is minimal. See, people, this is exactly why you should use coolant in your system, because that prevents rust. This is metal, and if you put water, then this will rust, and then that's when you have a failure. The block is very clean. I'm very happy with that, so I'll just get some scotch bright and clean up the surface, the mating surface, and then we can install the new one in. I need to research the torque specs. Perfect. Here's the old, and here's the new. They're exactly the same part. I don't need to, um, I'm going to take this outside because it's filthy, but filthy, <laughs> what's with my English, but yeah, beautiful, it's all the same parts. Okay, unfortunately my gasket maker broke there, so I couldn't do the bead like the manual says, so I, had, I applied it with my finger and smeared it all over the water pump, but that's okay because this also came with a gasket, so I'll put this over on top. There we go, gaskets on there, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll apply another layer on the face of where this is going to bolt up to, and then we'll bolt this up. Got it a bit dirty, so I'm going to have to clean this up. Okay, so I'll just apply some of this stuff on the surface, meaning surface on this side. Just a light smear, so we don't freaking get it everywhere. Oh, this is a bit difficult to film, so I'll just film it once it's done. All right, and there we have it, all smeared and sealed up so we don't get any leaks through the water pump. Next up, I'm gonna go the extra mile and uh, apply some thread sealant on these water pump bolts. So just, you know, in case water seeps through the threads, nothing's gonna get out. And also prevent stuff from rusting and seizing. Uh, so how do we do this? Basically, all we have to do is just dab a little bit of this stuff on each thread, just like that. And when we bolt it in, it'll just spread everywhere in the uh the insides okay i better put this back on before it sets so i'm not gonna be able to film this beautiful that fit like a glove so i'm just gonna finger tighten these bolts for now just to get it seated in properly um i'm really happy with that except that i overdid the sealant there when it wasn't required on that side but uh it's all right okay let's just put this bolt these bolts down three more to go Slowly does it. Sweet. Okay, all the bolts are in. The water pump fit really nicely. I'm really happy with that. According to the manual, I have to tighten it down to 24 Newton meters now. So, so this is the tool I need to use to make sure that I'm tightening the bolts correctly. And it's very important. So I've set this to 24 Newton meters according to the manual. So I'm just going to have to torque these down. Okay, so the way this works, it'll just give me an audible click once it's in the right torque setting. So I keep going back and forth. There we go. See? Click. That means 
that is now at the correct tightness as uh, or torque spec that the engineers had designed this car to be. So I'm just going to need to repeat this for the three bolts and we're done with the water pump. Okay, to pre prepare for the next job or the next part, I need to remove this cam gear, this cam gear, and this bottom cam sprocket, <coughs> crank sprocket, sorry. I think this should just come off. <gasps> oh, easy. <laughs> cool. So, um, the reason why we're being delayed again is because I thought I bought these parts. So that there, that black round thing, rubber thing is, uh, is called a crank seal. It's not leaking, but uh, it's a $5 part and you might as well replace it while you're here otherwise it's another two-day job just to replace that if it starts leaking and behind these is another set of uh, seals so let's remove the cam gear locks All right we need a 17 millimeter socket for this part and this should just come right out very nice this thing is doing its job really well keeping the things from moving oh this is too tight for a, a wrench so I'm gonna have to try something else okay I have a cam wrench here so I'm going to need to hold this in with the two prongs, like so, and then I'm going to have to counter push that way while I loosen it with a, with a wrench. Let's see how this works. Actually, never mind, we got the swivel. This should hopefully fit in here. Alright, let's give this a go. Uh-oh, that fell off. Okay, after squeezing this in, it actually ended up fitting. But now I can't really remove the the, <laughs> the tool because it's stuck in. I'm going to have to figure it out. All right, awesome. I got the bolts out, so this should just come off. Easy. I love how there's a key so that this can only go one way, so I can't mess up the timing. And that goes there, and this one goes there. Perfect. Left and right. So... Yeah, this is it. Um, I'm finishing off for today. After I clean all of this, I'll just give this all a nice clean so it's nice and... Uh, I'll give it all nice and nice clean so it's all this nice color here, this aluminum color. Um, <clears throat> it's actually not... Oh, actually, it is leaking. Oh, that is not good, people. Thank God I'm doing this. So yeah, I'll be removing these three round things tomorrow. I'll give everything a clean and then job done for the day. I'll get some kebabs and then start working on that blue one while I wait for parts for this one. Okay, let's do this. All right, this stuff is great. Literally, that was just a spray and walk away job. Look how clean the engine is now. Like, it's not spick and span, but it's just clean enough, just to see if there's any leaks. And, um, it's just left over, like, degreasers and brake cleaners. But, anyways, I will replace it. The rockers aren't leaking, and so are the cam seals, the half moon seals, I mean. Which is a good, good sign. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that. And the bottom is looking a lot cleaner than before. But it, the main seal is also not leaking. So, the reason why I got these tools this morning is so I can I can uh, pick these out and then replace the seal with the new ones when they arrive tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, let's pack away. I'm done for the day for this car. Okay, can belt time. Okay, so aligned, aligned. This one, still. okay. Okay. All right, so that was genius. I got the dots so I can put them against the cam locks, sorry, the camshaft and the crankshaft sprockets. So I don't have to mess around with the, trying to retime and retention. So yeah, that's just to prepare things for tomorrow. And yeah, this, the, the old belt had a little bit of stretch, but not too much, which is pretty amazing for an old belt. Okay, lads, we got maybe an hour oh, before the sun goes down. You see where it goes? Yeah. Yeah, way. so that goes that way. I need to just find, I think these are the bolts for it. There we go. 
there's the bolts then i need to figure out the torque specs so this is the tensioner pulley that's the idle idler tensioner so this is what um is on that swivel see this <clears throat> that swivel is pushed by this tensioner here you need to have it set to 10 newton meters but because of heat cycles you know belt stretch during heat and cold uh, engine temps this can move up and down to maintain the same level of tension to keep that timing correct that's why it's hydraulic like these fail then your engine's fucked because if your engine gets too hot and you have so much belt deflection or or um slack then your timing is all out of whack and then <laughs> your your valves are gone okay i just need to figure out the the torque specs for these bolts and then we can install it there it's not that hard like i reckon you can do that on your salica and your colt you just need you gotta see what the engine bay looks like bro it's... have you seen the engine bay on the gto it's like that yeah I... it's fine <laughs> trust trust okay now uh we'll probably put all these things in first before the camshafts are off uh no cam gears so this should just fit right in uh oh there it is like so next minute i pulled a grenade pin uh oh there we go new tensioner in place let's just put the bolts in now, i can't remember which one was which long top or long bottom it's a short and a long one we don't want to thread it so i'm just going to go carefully okay so the service manual calls for 13 new 13 newton meters for those bolts that i just uh installed for the uh to hold the, the tensioner unfortunately the smallest torque wrench i have only goes down to 20. um people seasoned mechanics will just say just tighten it you know as long as it's snug but for me i'm so ocd that i want to buy a smaller torque wrench to torque that down properly so i'll have to torque those down later uh for now i'll go and install these we got the seal off baby yeah, just the thing, all yeah it's all good one seal off oh my gosh for that when you put it on silicon what Huh? No, you got five, five, six, no, I'll put silicon in and um, it should be sweet. But yeah, what a slut job, people. Fuck removing seal cams, cam seals. Okay, with the help of Adrian moving the AC line and whacking this shit in, we managed to get one of the new seals in, guys. Top job. Um, yeah, that looks like it's pretty even around. I think I'm happy with that. Should be right. Let's it's get the other one out now. Oh my gosh. No, that's a tomorrow job. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. Uh, shall we? Sure you don't want to while you've got three of us here? No. Fuck, guys. This one came off like, like no tomorrow. This one was way easier. I think, it, I think, I think it's when Adrian left, eh? Yeah, Adrian's it, just fucking bad luck. Yeah, it's just complicated shit. Fuck. Like, fuck with Adrian. It took us three hours to remove that oh, one. Oh, look, Adrian scratched it even. Oh, fucking oh, Adrian. Oh, what a cunt. But, no, nah, legit, we, it took us like 20 seconds to pop this one out, eh? Yeah. Bro, it's the ginger luck and the Asian luck. Yeah, man. Luck of the Irish, mate. Luck of the Irish, mate. Ah, this, the, see, guys, if you're going to do car work, make sure Adrian's not around. <laughs> make sure you have your black little ginger with you, mate. <laughs> Shot, bro. My ginger, mate. Okay, well, both seals are in. This one just needs to be pushed in at the bottom. Two out of three is not bad. Just that one for tomorrow. Oh, shit. What was that? Hang on. The, yeah, just get the picks. The cams, I'll leave it in here. Hey, it's Sunday, and I hope to have this car finished by the end of today. I've already installed the two cam seals. So that's cam seal one. Good job. And two. I just need to push the bottom bit a little further. And I have to replace the seal, the main seal there. It's not leaking, but I might as well. I've also installed the tensioner. The, uh, the idler tensioner, the tensioner, and the hydraulic tensioner. <clears throat> the hydraulic tensioner, I just need to tighten that, that, tighten that a little bit more. Put the cams back, time it, put the car back together, and it should be running. Okay, so for those of you who have been following me uh, this past week, it's been raining and shining. That's why there's been so many delays. But um, I'm trying to make this as educational as possible. So, let's get on to the next part. Okay, because I don't have a cam locker, uh, cam seal tool, to install the seal here. I don't have any leverage to actually whack the back of this thing with a mallet like I did for this one. This one was nice and easy. So I've got a brake caliper separator and I've got a long tube here 
wedged into the engine bay so that when I crank this, it's gonna press it, press this into that. Oh yeah, when you don't have the right tool, you improvise. There you go, it's pushing that in now. There we go. Alright, that actually pushed it in. Oh yeah. <laughs> I am pretty smart. Paolo 1 car 525. I'm still. Let's keep going. <laughs> Alright, see that folks? If you don't have the right tools, you have to just sort of improvise and create your own tool out of the tools you currently already have. So that should seal and not leak for the next 20 years um, so I can keep this a dependable and reliable driver. Um, uh, pretty good job with this. Next up is this one. So I'm just gonna have to yank that out and then put the new one in. <clears throat> All right, this bottom seal didn't uh, give me too much trouble. Uh, and I have a tool here to pry it out and then grab it. There we go, looking great. Time to put the new one in. Every time you remove these seals, they're completely destroyed and yeah, you can't use them anymore. Okay, let's put the new one in. But first we're gonna clean that out. All right, that new seal's in, nice and flush. That was a lot easier to install than the top ones for uh, obvious reasons, because there's more space down here. Basically, I managed to lightly tap it with a mallet uh, using this on, on the seal and then, uh, sorry, it was like this and the socket <clears throat> like that and then hitting the back of it tap 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 uh, <clears throat> on the seal I've also cleaned the, the main crank sprocket so this should just slot in here I'm wondering if I should put some sort of lubricant in here to make it nicer to install yeah I'll do that that should do the trick some 556 uh, let's put this back in Oh, there you go. Oh, it actually goes in really easily. You just have to get it uh, at the correct angle and don't force it in if it doesn't want to go in. But it's very nice. Okay, let's put the sensor back in. Let's chop it. See, the great thing about working on your own cars is you can take your time and like do things uh, not only properly but go the extra mile to like really get into uh, satisfying your OCD. Like this here, this is the crank angle sensor. Um, it's magnetic. It was black before. I didn't realize it was um, magnetic. But basically, this little slit here is where these blades spin over. Um, if I can get a good camera angle here. Basically, it slots in there. And when the engine is rotating, uh, this sensor here, which is magnetic, will pretty much count, um, you know, where the crank is positioned based on number of teeth. I think. Or, or distance. I actually haven't looked into this. I'm just assuming things, but um, let's put this back together. Uh, hopefully the car, not that the car is running bad, but it might make it run better. So we'll see. Think. All right, <coughs> crank, sprockets in, sensors in, this crank sensor is in as well. And you can see the blade goes through that sensor, the magnetic field uh, to do its wizardry. I'm just double checking that I put everything back to the correct alignment because we don't want the blade slashing the internals of that um, uh, sensor. But uh, it looks like it's all good. There we go. There's space there for the blade to spin through uh, and get censored. Top job, lads. Okay. Um, literally just have to install uh, the cams and then the belt. So let's do that next. Whatever. All right, cam gears are in. Uh, this was really difficult to film because I don't have a tripod. Actually, I do, in the back of the car. I'll do that. Basically, the trick is um, this tool here holds the cam gear from spinning while I tighten the bolt with the proper torque wrench to get it to the proper spec of 88 Newton meters or 60 foot pounds, sorry, feet pound of torque. So I've done this one. I'll show you how I do this one. Give me a second. So we're going to use this tool again to move it to the other crank gear carefully because I don't want to scratch anything. And so we insert it through here. 
so we can give it the counter force it needs. So by me pushing that way against this tool, that's probably not the best location for this. That should work. And this is what tightens the bolt to 88 newton meters. I've said it already. Here it goes. Oh, it's a bit flimsy. I'll get it around this way instead. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So I'm pushing this way. And I'm pulling down on the torque wrench to tighten this sucker down. And then there we go, it clicked. That is at the correct tightness that the manufacturer specified based on the engineering manual. Okay, now it's time for the main attraction, the cam bell, the reason why we're doing this. And because I got the old one marked where they, uh, the teeth is positioned to the, to the pulley's intention is, <clears throat> I also part marked a new one. So uh, this will make my life easier. Um, <clears throat> easier to show than explain. So just move on to the next video and I'll show you what that was for. Okay, let's install this. Okay, so basically I just have to put the belts around the cams and because I marked them with the white dots there, I know which tooth uh, to put on which cam tooth or gear. And the bottom one is just gonna be that dot in the the top and the arrow the little dot knob there and <clears throat> that should help reduce the guesswork and get this timed really quickly according to the manual didn't realize the time it's already 12 20, uh, 30 quick lunch break gotta stay focused okay we're here at the, the two dollar store bargain city and we're spoilt for choice for paper clips i think these ones would probably work best for the cam belt and the cam <clears throat> or go smaller and be a little bit tighter hmm 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 yeah I think these ones are better more versatile to fit in curves all right so the purpose of these clips is to hold the cam belt down so that during installation uh, timing and installation of the, the bottom part um, this is not gonna lift up and come off so, um, I'll get onto this and start the time process. Okay, so the degreasers took off the dot off the marking I put on the cam sprocket, but thanks to taking videos, um, I know that the dot was supposed to be here because on the previous video I took of marking this, I can see that there was a scratch here and then another scratch just on top of this one. So, and I know that the dot would have been on, was, was on this one next to it, also uh, perfectly aligned with this hole. So that's, we are, we're gonna target that, like so. Nice, so we just need this tooth, uh, this gap here to be on the tooth. Thank God for taking uh, videos and photos as I go. Okay, just setting the timing, as you can see the sprocket here, luckily, this actually is perfect to hold. Can you hold this here? Just, no, no, this here. You see this? No, no, just stand there. You see this? Just push down on it against that metal piece so it doesn't go up. You probably should use two fingers, yeah. Push hard, yeah. It's not too hard, right? No. So with that, that's actually the correct tension so the grenade pin comes off easily. So I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tighten this bolt there um, just hold it. <clears throat> um, uh, okay. There's a tensioner bolt. There. Hopefully this doesn't come off. I need to come from underneath. <clears throat> Still holding? Yeah. Uh, this is the tricky part. It's a two-man job. Person job. Hopefully this doesn't move. Yeah. Grenade pin is perfectly loose. Keep that there. Hang on. Oh, nice. Keep keep putting pressure. It's so fortunate that it's still on the piece of metal, eh? Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, woo! This is the easiest tensioner job I've done. Let go? Oh, no, no, that's fine. Did you get dirty? Okay, thank you. That 
this uh, Mitsubishi tool worked in the end. Thanks to my sister Joy for helping. But as you can see, that was incredibly lucky because according to the manual, you have to put down a specific number of torque to get the tensioner putting the correct tension on the belt. Um, but because <laughs> that ended up being perfect um, by my sister just resting the tip of the end of that ratchet, I managed to get the correct tension because now I can remove this grenade pin freely with absolutely zero resistance. That means it's now within specification of uh, the manual that the that the, the rod is protruding between 3.8 to 4.5 millimeter millimeters. So I'm just gonna tighten this down with the torque wrench at the correct specs. Okay, so according to the manual, we have to torque this down to 48 Newton meters. This bolt here that with a smiley face. So carefully does it. You can go from I should go from this side. This might this might have been the quickest timing job I've ever done. Actually, we don't need this anymore since the timing belt is holding it in place. Now, whew, these lines could have made my life a lot. Ah, and that's the wrong socket. Oh my gosh. Let's get the 14. Okay, this time we got the 14 millimeter socket. Now we just have to tighten this until it clicks to the correct specification. The whole engine's moving because of how tight you need this to be. Come on. There we go. That's 14 Newton meters. That's not going anywhere. And so far, I hope I haven't messed up the alignment. Hang on there. Where's that grenade pin? Let's have a look. Um, bugger. Let's go from here. There we go. And that grenade pin is coming in and out with such ease. This must be like the quickest timing job I've ever done. So um, we can remove these safety clips now, since the tension, uh, the belt is tensioned. And as you can see, the alignment marks are all aligned with the engine mark timing marks uh, to the tooth belt and then the engine cover. As you can see, that is perfect timing, especially and of course the bottom here the timing on this one is not bad i just put that to mark but this that dot and yeah so that dot and that um that point on the so for the bottom the timing is not that sorry i needed to do another video but it's that sprocket there with the dot to the to the plate behind the sprocket pointing to that timing dot on the engine block so next up i just need to rotate this engine twice and then leave it for 15 minutes and hopefully i can still do this so let's rotate the engine now dog um ran this is my sister's dog and look at him he's running away from my sister such a cheeky dog oi Go back, go back inside. <laughs> this dog is cheeky. Okay, I need the right tools to actually rotate this engine. I found one of the extensions uh, for this. I need another one. Where's the other one? Holy shit. Why is there a socket hiding in here? Good thing I found this, because if I started the engine, um, this would have no doubt destroyed the fans. Okay, let's get on to rotating. Okay, so according to step 12 to 15 or 16, I believe, of the manual, once all the timing marks have been aligned and tensioner has been tightened, we have to rotate the engine twice by using this on the sprocket there. And, by ro and after rotating it full tur uh, two turns, we have to wait 15 minutes to see if the grenade pin still comes off freely like it did before. So I'll do that now. I'll set the camera here. Okay, two full rotations. Here we go. Oh man, I should have removed the spark plugs. Yeah. That's one. And that's two. 
Let's return things to top dead center and wait 15 minutes. Actually, I had to rotate it another extra revolution because uh, off camera because I dropped, I went past the timing marks. But uh, after three rotations, the engine is still perfectly aligned at the cams. Now I'm hoping the bottom is too. <laughs> yes, that is good. Um, now we just have to wait and see after 15 minutes if it's if the tension if I'm able to remove that grenade pin Okay, it's been 15 minutes. I took a dump which was exactly 15 minutes. So that was pretty cool Now moment of truth is that grenade pin gonna be coming off as easily as it did when I was uh, in the process of uh, Setting the tension here it goes fingers crossed. This is the most uh, the Part of the job that gets annoying if to keep repeating it Oh, look at that, folks. There's like no resistance. That's like a well lubricated, you know what, going into you know where. But uh, aside from that, um, yeah, pretty much done job. That's perfect timing. What I'll do now is I'll just rotate the engine a couple more times and then check that the align alignment marks are all uh, lining up still. But I'm pretty happy. I got that. Whoops. <clears throat> I think it's on the floor. I got the, the timing perfect and the tension perfect first go. That is amazing. On that blue car, it took me like three weekends to get it right. But to be fair, that blue car had like four of these to time. Okay, I just rotated the engine three times again. As you can see, that dot on the uh, sprocket gear is perfectly, uh, and that uh, sh sharp pointy bit on the plate is perfectly aligned with that timing dot on the block and so are the teeth uh if i can get a good angle here there we go the white gear tooth is perfectly aligned with the timing mark on the engine block on the rocker cover sorry for the rear cam and the front also oh my gosh now um don't be fooled the where i put the the dots on the belt doesn't matter because the belts well, that's that's a variable. I mean, that'll move around, so that's no problem. As long as the cam gears are always perfectly aligned uh, with with the crank, that's all good. Fastest cam belt job ever. Oh my god! Oh, look who decided to show up uh, after the job was completed. This guy turns up to help. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, introduce you to Alex. What's up, man? You just got here in time uh, for me to finish up. Oh, no, I'm actually going now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alex is here to assist. Uh, let's put this back on first, the battery terminal. There we go. Should be good enough. And uh, Alex here will hold on to the cam timing sensor, whatever you call it, crank sensor. We're gonna start it. What's that? Don't shit yourself. I'm shitting myself right now, dude. Here goes nothing. I'm just gonna open the window. Okay, here. Should we do it? Here we go. Yo! Wax man. <laughs> Thanks for your help, bro. <laughs> Couldn't have done it without you holding that. <laughs> nah, jokes, bro. Thanks for the. Nah, all good, all good. Thanks for the most. I'm just doing it for the comedy. Yo, that's perfect, dude! It sounds quieter than before. Gee, I'm a mechanic. Uh, do I, am I a certified mechanic now, bro? Do you approve? You're the real mechanic. I I'm approve, just. G, yeah, approve. I'm a backyard mechanic thanks to the real mechanic. How's it looking, baby? How's it looking? Smells good. Yeah, you can turn it off now. Okay. Alright, it's time to put back everything together since it started nicely. Thanks to Alex for the help. G. What's your channel name again? Alex it's, just Shaw. My, it's just my name, mate. Oh, that's me too, Paolo Garcia, yeah, Alex Shaw. So we're gonna put everything back together. I've already got the lower engine mount in. I dropped my nuts because I thought this was supposed to be before the cam belts. Uh, doing well. What do you so, mean? We're getting there. Let's just tighten this up with the gun. And it's stuck now. Yeah, it's night time at 6.15, I'm running out of sunlight, <clears throat> that's why I had to bust out the torch, the flashlight, the floodlight, whatever you want to call it. Uh, engine mounts on, 
everything is back in. I just need to torque down the engine mounts and put back the AC system and we're ready to start this. But I think I will call it a day and do the coolant checks tomorrow. Okay guys, it's a lovely Sunday. I understand I'm posting these videos late, but um, the reason for this is because I didn't want to overload the stories. Uh, <laughs> pretty sure I already have. <clears throat> the next step to do is just to fasten these three bolts and then this main one here holding the engine mount and the engine and then putting these back on. So these three bolts down here needs to be tightened down to 42 feet pound of torque. <clears throat> I got my torque wrench here to the sitting that we need and now it's just a matter of timing it. So let's do it. Here goes nothing. <clears throat> oh. And that's 42. Now the next one, just moving this over. Ah. That's one, our second one. And the last one. There we go. All right, let's put this cover back together. Newton meters is fine for these. Now, I broke the clips during this assembly. Good thing I have spares, courtesy of AliExpress, baby. I think these little ones will fit fit nicely. All right, that fit nicely. Now we just have to lock it in place. Oops, dropped one of the screws in there. Oh, okay, third time lucky. Oh, it doesn't want to go in. Oh, too big. Ah, that's why. I got a screw that was for the bigger ones. There we go. And one more. Uh, where's the other one? And lucky last. And there we go, folks. All buttoned up. I can put the wheel back on. Drop the engine and continue tightening the engine mounts. Okay, so for, the for this next part of the job, we're going to need some new coolant. This is some um, concentrated and this is some distilled water. So cannot use tap water for this. It is very important that you use um, um, a specific water for it. So pretty much is distilled water or deionized. I can't remember which one is which. So the trick is you want 50% distilled water and then 50% concentrated coolant. So we don't create a mess and we pour from the side. There we go. Look at that. We're getting, we're turning green, baby. Oh yeah, this looks delicious, but do not drink this, guys. This is actually poisonous. All right, there we have it, folks. Let's just give this a bit of a mix. All right, let's get ready for the next bit. Okay, so next up, we have to open the radiator uh, by removing the cap. And now, I have to use the correct attachment for this to work. Very useful um, tools here. Uh, let me show you how it works. Okay, so out of all of these snouts, I don't actually know if you call it a snout, this one fits, and then we're gonna need to lock it in place. Lock it in place with the Mitsubishi specific one, which is this. There we go, nice and tight. We just need to remove the rest of the contents, we're not gonna need them. And then we put this on here, and there we go, we have a funnel. So this, we remove this. I'll show you what this is for later. And now we start filling it with the mixture that we just made. I'm hoping we don't have any leaks. We'll just let the system, the engine get filled up since we lost a lot by from disassembling this, the car to do the cam belts. So far so good, it's not leaking there. There's also no visible leakage from under the car. So we'll just wait for that to come down and then we'll go to the next step. Oh wow, we actually ended up using the entire bottle. Uh, hopefully, uh, that's all we need. We still have a lot up top. Okay, so far so good, no leaks, and we, there's no more coming down. We're getting sucked into the engine, now we have to turn on the engine. All right, so turn the engine on, put the heater on max, and then start it. Oh, the engine just starts. Awesome, so I've got you need to put your heater on max hot and then now allow the engine to run because you can see now that uh, the engine, the water pump is spinning 
than what we replaced before a couple of days ago or last week and now air bubbles need to come out of the system so far so good there's no leaks from the water pump area um, where we replace things it's a bit smoky from all the detergents and cleaners that I had to spray all over the car but other than that this engine is running way smoother now it sounds really good so let's just wait so this is a bit of a it will take some time so you just have to wait for all the bubbles to stop coming out and that's when you know it's done having air in the system is not good so we're gonna have to wait for all that to come out for now let's just cover it a bit <clears throat> so nothing falls into there and you have to wait for the temperature to get real hot and for the fans to kick in to turn on and off a couple of times to completely bleed the system and by bleed I mean get rid of all the air pockets in the system so far so good I love how quiet this engine sounds now yeah it sounds great right let's wait a while there we go folks there's no more air bubbles stop this now it just started raining so this is the point of this uh, shaft here basically we plug it in so that when we lift it doesn't spill now we can put the unused back and pull. There we go, no waste. There you have it folks, camp belt's done. Yeah, I saved maybe about a thousand dollars, one thousand to two, one thousand two hundred dollars on labor, uh, doing it myself. <clears throat> the car, the wheel's back on. The only thing left to do is go for a drive and see how it drives. But so far so good, coolant's topped up. <clears throat> yeah, job well done. Let's go for a drive. Okay gang, it's the moment of truth. We're gonna drive this thing. It's all back together. Let's go. Oh, fingers crossed it doesn't snap. Okay, let's start this bad boy up. Whoa, smooth. Nice. Okay, let's pull the window down so I can hear any anything not sounding right, just in case. Let's do this. Whoop. Oh, so far so good. Feels smooth. Whoa. Yo, what the fuck? Why does it feel different? The takeoff feels a lot nicer. Um, which doesn't make any sense because the timing was perfect when I removed the old one. Uh, but yeah, so far, man, this feels nice. Uh, let's let the car warm up and go for a, a Mavic pull. My anxiety is getting the best of me, so before we do any crazy pulls, I just want to check on everything. Everything here looks good. Put the flashlight on. I love how everything sounds so quiet now. So smooth, so quiet. <clears throat> and we got no leaks. No leaks. Try from the front of the car. No leaks. Oh, that AC pump is starting to get noisy. But, yo, people, no leaks, no leaks. You gotta love that. So official. But the rest of the Mavic cover needs to be cleaned up. <clears throat> but yes, I think we're good for a Mavic pull. Let's do this. Uh, I'm just gonna gun it. As soon as those turn signals go green to go right, I'm gonna plant it and try to reach 8,000 RPM and see how it holds up. I have full confidence this is not going to snap the belt or ruin the timing, uh, but yeah, here goes. Let's do it. Holy crap. This is taking ages. Oh, well, more time to warm up the fluids. All right, green, finally, let's go. Here we go, here we go. Woo! Oh yeah, that was good. Everything is fine, guys. Everything is fine. Feels a lot smoother, man. I don't know how new cam belts changes things, even if the timing is good, like perfect before. Feels way better. Damn. Fuck yeah. All right, that's a job well done, boys. Case closed.